Welcome back to a new video. This lecture is going to be about ARIMA models. This video is going to be one of the videos that I create for my time series analysis playlist. You can just reach to that playlist from the cards of this video. Let's start coding. Let's start by creating a dataset and let me show you the first part and checking how it looks. I will say dataframe.head for that. Great. So as I said, we are going to talk about ARIMA models and CIRMA models in this lecture. At the end of this video, I'm going to talk about when to select ARIMA and when to select CIRMA. ARIMA, which we can also refer as autoregressive integrated moving average, is a powerful tool for predicting future values based on past observations. It will take orders P, D, Q as parameters. We can give orders like 2, 4, 1, like this, we are going to set order and we are going to give something like 2, 4, 1 and we are going to pass this inside the model. So let's talk about what each of them. The first value is P, second is D and third is Q. The order is denoted as P, D, Q where each parameter has a specific role in the time series analysis. P, autoregressive, represents the number of leg observations included in the model. It signifies the number of previous time points used to predict the current point. In the time series, a higher value of P implies a more complex autoregressive component. D integrated is the order of differencing needed to make the time series stationary. If the original time series is not stationary, differencing is applied to remove trends or seasonality. The value of D indicates how many times differencing was performed. Q moving average component refers to the size of the moving average window representing the number of lagged forecast errors in the prediction equation. It helps capture the effect of past forecast errors on the current observation. A higher Q value implies a more complex moving average component. For example, in the order of let's say this time 2, 1, 3, P is 2, we are using the two previous time points for autoregression, so P2 and the D is 1, we perform differencing once to make the time series stationary and Q is 3, it means that we consider 3 legged forecast errors for the moving average component. Choosing appropriate values for P, D, Q is crucial for ARIMA model's effectiveness. Great, let's train our ARIMA model with the orders we learned about. So I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to say time series and it's going to be data frames filtered version of date column and values column. And then I'm going to say set index and I'm going to set the index as date. So at the end, we are going to have time series data frame like this. Date as our index and values are values. Great, so we can just write index for checking the index and it's going to be the date values we have. Okay, let's start by plotting this. I will say plt.plot time series that index and time series values and I'm going to set the label as original time series and I'm going to give the title like time series and I will say plt x label date y label values I will add legend and I will say plt dot show at the end great so this is our data and now I'm going to create a function to evaluate the ARIMA model. So I will say define evaluate ARIMA model. I will give the order inside this function. I will say model is going to be equal to the ARIMA like this. We are going to import this from. Okay, before the evaluation part, let's do something like we are going to import this from from stats models that time series analysis ARIMA model import ARIMA this is going to be our import and then we are going to say something like model is going to be equal to the ARIMA we will give the time series we created I'm going to do this later on the video I changed and I will say order let's say for example 111 okay so after that we can just say model.fit and we can set this as result and then what we can do is we can basically say result.summary for getting the summary of our model. 
So here's our model summary. Model is Arima model with the order 111, PTQ, each one. And we can see AIC score and number of observations and information like that from here. We can see the skill and we can see other options. Uh, coefficients, quartiles, p-values. Okay, so, so after that I'm going to say something like forecast steps and it's going to be 90 for getting 90 day forecast. Remember that I'm just going to call the time series. It's day based, so it's going to give me 90 days forecast. If I just make 365, it's going to give me a one year forecast. But if this was, if this data was month based, it was going to forecast for nine months. So you need to check if it's day based, year based or month based before forecasting. I will say in here, forecast values, and they are going to be results. The thing we defined is result, result dot predict, and then we are going to say start is going to be data length. Actually, we need to say forecast values for that data length, which is length of the time series, and then we are going to say and is going to be equal to the length of the time series plus forecast steps and minus one then we are going to set the dynamic as false so after that we are going to get our values inside in here so i can just call forecast values and we can see our predictions for the future great so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create something like forecast dates and it's going to be pandas date range and start is going to be time series dot index minus one plus the first entry of the time series index it was time series data i remember it like that quick and check it's time series okay and then i'm going to say pandas time delta days equals to one and I'm going to give periods is going to be forecast steps and I will say frequency as daily after that what we are going to do is we are going to say plt dot plot and we will say time series dot index it's going to be time series after that and time series values and we will say label original data and then I'm going to say plt.plot we will give the forecast dates and forecast values in here then I'm going to set the color as red and I will say label is going to be forecast and then I'm going to say title it's going to be Arima 3 months forecast and then I'm going to give the x label like date I'm going to give the y label like values i will use plt.legend and i will use plt.show so here is our forecast great so it's not looking good because we set the order randomly like we can just change this order let me quickly change that if we give something like 314 we were going to see that our let me quickly change this up you are going to see the difference by changing the order we can change the forecast how it's going to look and we can get different forecasts from this like we can just say 365 instead of 90 and we can get a yearly forecast from here we are going to see that we are going to have a longer forecast for finding a good order what we can do is i was going to talk talk about it firstly but i changed my mind now i'm going to talk about it we are going to create a function to evaluate Arima model. So after this forecasting part, we can talk about that. I'm going to say define, evaluate, Arima model. We will give the order. And then I'm going to set model inside Arima. I will give time series and order is going to be order. Then I'm going to say model.fit from model fit like this. I'm going to set predictions and it's going to be equal to the model fit the predict start is going to be zero and end is going to be length of the time series 
minus 1. And then I'm going to say mean squared error is going to be actually, let me quickly import it from scikit-learn.matrix import mean squared error from here. This is going to be our metric for success. It's going to be mean squared error time series values and predictions in here like this. And after that, I'm going to print mean squared error for order is going to be mean squared error. And after creating this, what we can do is we can create something like orders to try. It's going to be a list like one, one, one. And then we can say one one two we can extend these values we can say two one one and after that i'm going to say something like two one two and let's do a final one like you can extend these values after that i will say for order in orders to try i will say elate Arma model and I will give the order in here. So here we can see our mean squared error values. The lower is better. So creating the model with this in these options is the best path, but you can just extend these values like increasing this number helped us. So I'm just going to change the third one. Like I will say two and three for the last one. And let's see if its value is going to decrease from here the third one yeah it decreased so our third component needs to be higher and we can just do things like that I'm just going to copy this one and get up I'm just going to change the order in this way I'm going to set this then I'm going to retrain my model then what I'm going to see is with this I'm going to get a new forecast with the order I just found you can just extend these values as you wish and find the lowest mean squared error. Now let's keep with seasonal autoregressive integrated moving average or SARIMA. SARIMA extends ARIMA by incorporating seasonality into our forecasting models. Let's dive into the code and see how SARIMA enhances our predictions. So I'm not going to change anything from here. I'm just going to create a basic SARIMA model. So for that, I'm going to say import stats models that API as SM, then I'm going to say order is going to be something like one, one, one. And this time we are going to give something like seasonal order. Actually, there's a lot of typos. Let me quickly change that seasonal order. And it's going to be like one, one, one again. But this time we are going to give 12 again with the order because it's going to be our seasonal component. The S between ARIMA is the seasonal and in here we are giving that seasonal component. So after setting this, we are going to say something like model is going to be stats models that time series analysis that Sarimax data frame values. And we will say order is going to be order. Seasonal order is going to be seasonal order. So after setting this, what we can do is we can just say results and we can just use model.fit. So if we get the results.summary, we are going to see that our model is created successfully. So at the modeling side, we have these outputs like F values and this, and here is our model summary for the Sarimax model. We have our AIC score, number of observations, skill and heteroscedasticity variable of results in here okay great so it was all for the Sarimax we can do predictions like results that predict and steps is going to be like 90 again we can just do stuff like that and we will get values we can plot it and everything is same great so that was all for the coding part thanks for watching the video I'm sharing two or three new videos every week about data science and Python programming you can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. This was one of the lectures of time series analysis playlist. You can watch the others for learning more. I'm going to add the playlist link in the cards of this video or in the description. See you in the next tutorial.